All right, so we're returning to thinking about discrete time dynamical systems, right? So last video, we did a kind of optimization problem that came from a discrete time dynamical system, right? But recall a discrete time dynamical system is just anything of the form. You know, x t plus one is some function of x at time t before, right? So you're updating some variable x through time so that you can go, you know, x at time zero gives me x at time one, gives me x at time two, gives me x at time three, etc. right? And so uh, kind of a, a uh, interesting part of these kind of discrete time systems are the equilibrium points, right? That's a point where once you reach it, you're kind of stuck there for all time, right? So you've reached equilibrium in that system, right? So an equilibrium point is a point at which the output of this discrete time system, right? So the output is exactly the input, right? So then if you were to iterate this dynamical system from X star, you would get X star and then X star and then X star, right? Forever. You'd be stuck there at this equilibrium point. Okay. And then from here, there's basically two kinds of equilibria, right? They're stable and unstable, right? So stable equilibria are points that the system approaches, right? Points the system approaches. Right? Approaches. Right? So if X star is a stable equilibrium, let's say, then if this was a plot of the discrete time system, right? So this would be T and this would be my X values, right? And let's say this is X star up here. Then our, our uh, system, right? We start, let's say close to it. Let's say here, we start here. Then it will approach it and kind of get closer and closer to it as time goes on, right? Or, or from on top, it could come down there, right? And then unstable equilibria are points the system moves away from, right? So points the system moves away from. And both of these have to be equilibria first. So they both have to satisfy, you know, this equation here, right? So once you're at one of these equilibriums, regardless of its stability, you'll stay there for all time. It's just a question of what do trajectories nearby look like. So points the system moves away from are called unstable equilibria. So in this same sort of picture, right? If I have my X star here and it's unstable now. If I start nearby, I'm going to move away from it. So that's not the best, but. Here are my data points. They're moving away from this unstable equilibrium point. Okay, so this is my x versus t again. Okay, and so we saw this in our cobwebbing diagrams, right? So uh, last time we did discrete time systems, we learned how to classify via cobwebbing, right? So we looked at these cobweb diagrams and we were able to see whether or not trajectories close by moved away or towards these equilibrium points. And that's how we decided whether it was stable or unstable. So if I switch back over here, so this is 0.75 X plus 1.25. So this comes from that, uh, this is like our lung model, right? And in this case, we had one equilibrium point at some, some value. And if we start, you know, close to it, and we iterate this map, we move towards it. Okay. So we move towards about 4.86. Right, and if I start on the other side of it, so if I start like five, oh, I guess five is the equilibrium point here, right? So if I start away from five, right? If I start above it, I'm gonna move towards it as well. So we said this is a stable equilibrium point because trajectories that start nearby move towards it. And it's an equilibrium because if I start exactly at it, I stay there for all time, okay? And then the stability comes from trying points nearby it. Okay, so then we had this other system here. So this was from kind of that mutant versus wild type bacteria problem. So here we have uh, 2x 
over 2x plus 1.5 1 minus x in the denominator. Right? And so this is the one that had two equilibrium points, one at zero and one at one. Right? So if I start maybe in the middle, we'll see, okay, which one am I going to go towards? And that'll tell us which one's stable. So if I start at point six, I actually end up moving towards this one here at x star equals one. Right? So I keep iterating this. I eventually get closer and closer to one. If I start exactly at one, we find that that is indeed the equilibrium point. If I start a little bit above it, even though it's not really physical for this example, uh, you'll see that you move towards it. So x equals one is the stable equilibrium here, right? If I start close to zero, if I start exactly at zero, we stay there for all time, right? But if I start a little bit away from it, we actually move away from zero towards the other equilibrium point. So zero is unstable. Let's write that all down, right? So we had these examples from before, right? So they had this example, the lung model. You remember we had, you know, C, T plus one, the concentration at breath. Uh, T plus one is 0 0.75, concentration at breath T plus 1.25. So this is like inhaling uh, some fresh air with a different concentration of uh, maybe oxygen is what we're tracking here, right? And so we saw just from the diagram, I just showed that C star stable equilibrium was five and it was stable via cobwebbing, right? So that's what we just showed. Another example is from this mutant versus wild type bacteria fraction. Right, so these are videos from, I want to say like module two or three, wild type bacteria population fraction, right? So the fraction of this was fraction of mutants in the next generation was two times the fraction of mutants in the previous divided by this kind of total fraction where this came from the mutants that are growing and then this came from the non-mutants that are growing at a different rate. Okay, and so we saw that this has two equilibria, P star equals zero and P star equals one. And we saw that this one was unstable and this one was stable via the cobwebbing only. Okay, so let's go back and look at these diagrams and just think about what, what does the shape of these functions look like, right? If I go back to this mutant example, I have two equilibriums, I have one that's stable and one that's unstable. And what's the difference between these graphs, right? If I look over at the stable one, we can see it crosses the identity line, the red identity line, and it kind of crosses it from above, okay? And if we look at the other one, right? I'm going from left to right, the update function crosses the identity line from below, okay? And so if I look at a different system, where maybe now instead of looking at the mutant fraction, I'm looking at the wild type fraction, right? So it's the same parameters, but now I'm looking at the opposite fraction. So it has zero and one are the stable and unstable equilibrium here, and they're in the opposite order. So I have 0.6, let's iterate from here. It goes to zero, right? Because now the mutants are dominating. So the fraction of non-mutants or wild type bacteria is going to zero. So this is our stable equilibrium now. And, you know, x star equals one is the unstable. And what's the difference here? Well, the difference here is this update function is now crossing the identity line from above. And the unstable one is crossing the identity line from below. Okay, so that kind of gets us to a nice, a nice rule about this. So if I switch back over here, right, this cobwebbing technique comes from the, the way that our update function crosses the identity line, right? So when the update function crosses the identity line, right? Right, so the update function again is, you know, xt plus one equals f of xt, right? So when we're plotting it in the xt versus xt plus one plane, this is the red one. The identity line is then xt plus one equals xt, right? That's the, the line that goes straight through the middle from 
when you cross it from above, it ends up being stable. And when you cross it from below, that point is unstable. Okay. And so what does it mean to cross the identity line from above? It means that uh, to cross basically y equals x from above, it means that the slope of your function at that point has to be uh, less than one, right? It implies that f prime of x star, right? The update function at the point where we're crossing that equilibrium point, the slope of that has to be less than one, okay? And to cross it from below, right? That means that your update function has to be steeper than the identity line. So it has to be positive and bigger than one, right? So for both of these, we're thinking about um, crossing it with positive slope. So with positive slope. We'll get into negative slope, which is more complicated in another video. So when your derivative at that point is positive, then you check whether it's less than or greater than one, and that'll tell you whether you're crossing from above or below the identity line, and that tells you the stability, okay? So this brings us to the uh, stability criterion using the derivative, right? So uh, for a dis uh, discrete time dynamic system, dynamical system, xt plus one equals f of xt, right? So some update applied to x at time t. Let's make this more clear, xt. Okay, for a discrete time dynamical system, an equilibrium x star, recall that you know x star is equal to f of x star, right? That's how you find these equilibrium points, can be classified by its derivative only, by f prime at x star, okay? So just by computing the derivative of this update function at our critical point, we can determine the stability, okay? And so then we don't have to look at a diagram, you know, if, if we're not near a computer or something, we don't have to uh, look at a cobwebbing diagram. We can just compute it by looking at the derivatives, kind of an algebraic or calculus approach. Okay, so then uh, there's two situations, right. let's just say situation one is when f prime of x star is, and let's just think about positives, right? When it's less than one, x star is uh, stable. And two, when f prime of x star is bigger than one, x star is unstable. Okay, and if f prime of x star is equal to one, uh, this test doesn't work, right? The test is inconclusive. You'll have to use a cobwebbing approach, okay? So when it's exactly equal to one, uh, this might not work, okay? You'd have to kind of do a little more investigating of what this function is doing. And for uh, f prime of x star negative, we will get to this later. Okay, so there is kind of another set of conditions when that slope is negative, but we'll get to this in another video. Okay, so just for right now, there's, there's these two uh, conditions. When it's positive and less than one, that means our derivative, or our critical point, that equilibrium, sorry, is stable. And when that derivative is bigger than one, it's unstable, right? So, uh, I can do a couple examples here. Um, yeah, let's just do a quick example to confirm these ones. So let's look at the lung model, All right? So let's go back to the lung model. Let's do it in blue, All right? So go back and up to that example above, lung model CT plus one equals 0 0.75 CT plus 1.25, All right? We said that there is an equilibrium at C star equals five. So to check, right, this is F of CT. To check the stability, we just need to look at the derivative, okay? 
So f prime of ct, we take the derivative of this with respect to that variable. That is just a line, so we just get 0 0.75, right? Which means that f prime at c star, right? Which is f prime at five is still 0 0.75, which is positive and less than one, right? So zero f prime of c star is less than one. So c star is stable, which is the same uh, stability that we got from cobwebbing, but now we don't have the cobweb. All right, let's do one more example from the uh, mutants. I think it was population fraction, All right? So this was P at time T plus one is two P sub T or two P sub T plus 1.5, one minus P T, okay? And so we'll call that f of pt, right? We said we have two equilibria, one at p star equals zero, one at p star equals one. Let's classify them using this new uh, stability criterion. Right, so let's take the derivative of that function. So f prime of pt, okay? Well, it's a quotient, so we'll have to use the quotient rule, right? So it's low times the derivative of the top, so low d high. Derivative of the top is just 2 minus high 2pt d low, so the derivative of the bottom. So this is just going to be a 2 here and then a minus 1.5 for the other part. So it'd be 2 minus 1.5. All that over the denominator squared. Right, low d high minus high d low squared the bottom. And away we go. All right, so then let's just. Uh, clean this up a little bit. So this is 2 PT plus 1.5 minus 1.5 PT times two. So let's go 4 PT plus three, one minus PT. And then here we'll just factor that out. Two minus uh, one and a half, sorry. Two minus 1.5 is 0 0.5 times two is one. So I just get a minus PT. I'm not gonna change the bottom because I don't want to factor that out, but we could, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, but I don't think we're gonna need to because we know that the bottom squared is gonna be positive, right? No matter what. Uh, so let's just clean up the top a little bit more. So this gives us four PT minus three PT minus PT. So it's four PT minus three PT minus PT and then plus three. And that is going to be divided by 2pt plus 1.5, 1 minus pt squared. Okay. So then I believe what this does is it cancels this out. And we're left with just a 3 on top. 3 over 2pt plus 1.5, 1 minus pt squared. Let me just double check. Make sure I'm on the right track. Yeah, okay. Um, so then let's, at this point, let's plug in our numbers, right? So we wanna find the stability at P star equals zero and P star equals one. So let's try P star equals zero. So F prime of zero is three over two times zero plus 1.5, one minus zero squared gives me three over 1.5 squared, which gives me three over 2.25, which is bigger than one, right? This is 1.333. So F prime at zero is bigger than one, it's positive. So that means that P star equals zero is unstable, right? Which we also saw from cobwebbing. Let's try our other point f prime at one. Well, that's gonna be three over two times one plus 1.5, one minus one squared. So that's three over two squared, right? Because that's, let's say two plus zero squared. So that's three over four, which is, you know, 0 0.75, right? Which is less than one and it's positive, right? So we have zero f prime of one 
is less than one, which means P star equals one is stable. Okay. And that's the same as the uh, stability we showed through cobwebbing. So now that we know how to take derivatives, we have a nice effective tool to classify the stability of these uh, equilibrium points where we don't have to maybe mess with graphs and try to figure out it from cobwebbing. We can just uh, do some good old fashioned calculus and find the stability that way. Or you can do it both ways and kind of double check your answers. All right.